and welcome to another episode of Inside the Burrow, the FAU podcast for and by our fans. This week, we have the return of Shane Marinelli. Like I said a couple weeks ago, he will be joining us ever so often on the podcast. So happy to have you back this week, Shane. And of course, we have Jake Elman, uh, the regular for this year. That all being said, guys, uh, we're recording this on Labor Day, Monday night, just a few hours or a few days removed uh, from our trip to Gainesville to open up the season. Long story short, the number 13 Florida Gators probably looked a lot better than a number 13 team in a nation to me. Um, kind of manhandling the Owls all night long uh, to a 35 to 14 score line that honestly I think flatters us quite a bit. So that being said, let's just dive into our takes on the game. Uh, we're just going to give maybe one or two takes on, on what we think we liked or maybe some things we need to improve on. We're going to go ahead and start with Jake. Uh, your two cents on the UF loss. I saw flashes. I saw some things that I could say right now are things that FAU could build off. I thought Nikosi Perry played well. I thought the secondary played extremely well at times, but too many concerns. Um, some of those I think you can chalk up to playing UF on the road, but some of them continued offensive line struggles. Um, I felt there was some inconsistency with the receivers. Thought the defense made plays. They made great plays, but didn't play great overall. So the good news is it's early. You put this loss behind you. You beat up on uh, four of them in a couple of weeks. You take down Georgia Southern this week, and hopefully you go in the Air Force with a two and one record, a positive point differential, and we're feeling much better than some of us are feeling right now. Ab ab absolutely, absolutely, uh, definitely some positives. Uh, Shane, did you have any positives from Saturday night? Yeah, I. It's this was to be expected. I think most people predicted the game would go this way. Like most scores I saw predicted was kind of right in this realm. Uh, I said in the Owls 247 podcast, thanks for having me back, by the way, guys. It's always fun to kind of come back to the stomping grounds. So in the Owls 247 podcast today that like this game has so many comparisons to 2017 Wisconsin. First two drives, Jonathan Taylor comes out and runs down our throat. Florida's going to score on their scripted drives. Once the defense kind of settled in, Outside of be outside of the last long run they had, which I think was it was it was a busted assignment. They kind of had to earn everything, you know. I think I saw a stat that Florida like faced a, close to twenty third downs. A lot of them were short, which you want, but it's like I mean, it wasn't first down, first down, first down. It, they didn't have these four play drives, right? They they still had to fight, guys. Florida has, and I'm just saying for twenty four seven sports the the seventh best roster in the country talent wise their front seven on defense is full of guys who are going to be drafted in the first three rounds. Okay. So, you know, the fact that FA was able to, were they outmatched? Yes. Did they look like they completely didn't belong? You know, uh, FAU looks closer to Florida than Miami looked to Alabama. Okay. Uh, you know, but Taggart pointed out a really good stat today that I, you know, I, I was looking at how many first downs we got. We only had one three and out. And then Taggart said, you know, seven of the 11 drives went past the 50 yard line. Granted, we had a lot of poor field position the whole night, but yeah, those, there was, there was no, they, they weren't inept. They were moving the ball. The route concepts were good. Uh, maybe you can chalk up a couple of those sacks to just guys just getting beat. They're going to get beat. I mean, it's the difference between, you, let, let's just be real and on like a talent point of view. Chaz Neal wasn't going to, was a backup at Florida state in the spring. Okay. Now he's our starting right tackle. So, you know, I, I'm not saying these guys can't develop and I think they will, but when you're going against the Dexters and the Carters of the world, it's a mismatch. Uh, and it it's, you know, if you look, go back to that 2017 Wisconsin game, we scored 14 points. So it was 35, 14. So, uh, you know, we had a red zone stop in that game. Uh, you know, even if you, if you go back to that game, if you take away the kind of the one busted coverage Wisconsin had, we, we don't, even, we only put really one nice drive together in that game. So we went on to win the conference easily with that same team. 
Yeah, that, that's actually a great point, Shane. Uh, I, I think there was a, a hurricane that weekend too, uh, uh, forced the team to stay in Madison mm-hmm. for, for about a week. Uh, very interesting game that was. Um, but my take, oh, by the way, when you mentioned the, the Florida State O-line, how uh, he was the, the second string in the spring, that's a, a pretty bad, historically bad Florida State O-line that we've seen in the past two years as well. Um, so, I mean, we got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, Jordan Travis was running for his life last night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he got out of a lot of – so it's just – again, I mean, there's a couple things with the offense I could say, meh, but I didn't, I didn't like that, but I thought – Again, Mitchell played well. Uh, you know, Wester had a couple drops. I think yeah. that's just a little bit of nerves. He was, I think one of them, he was kind of looking looking to go. Um, I know Jamie on Posey is going to catch some criticism. Listen, guys, the first Wildcat play where he trips, I think he saw a lot of green grass and kind of pulled a little early and tripped over got kind of mixed up with McCann. And cause if you go back and look at that replay, if he doesn't trip, he gets 30 yards. They had numbers on that side. Like they, they had that play. Uh, you know, the, the, the end around, I said on our podcast, I'm like, you know, I saw some people out there criticizing, like, why are we getting tricky? It's a jet sweep. That's like the third play you learn in little league football after handoff, left handoff, right. You learn jet sweep. And the next play is like quick slant. So like that stuff just has to be executed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, I think we, I wanted to ask you guys about the Posey project in a bit uh, real quick, but first I'll, I'll just say that good teams win great teams cover recovered. Uh, I guess that's all you can really ask for on the road against an, an really good SEC opponents. I mean, I thought Clemson was going to beat UGA pretty, pretty handily. Uh, so obviously Florida has her hands full with UGA this year, but the SEC East, I think, is is uh, wide open. Um, O-line versus D-line, I'm concerned about both when it comes to FAU's O-line and D-line. Uh, I don't think the defense line got anywhere near the amount of pressure I was expecting. I mean, I wasn't expecting, you know, us to constantly be in the backfield. But, I mean, I think it was like three hurries all game long. It wasn't great to see. Um, uh, and, and the two stops you mentioned, Shane, uh, the two stops, we had two stops in the red zone. One was the interception. One was um, a goal line stand on fourth down. Those were great, but but UF still just marched their way downfield. Granted, it was a field position uh, situation at that point. Uh, they were getting the ball and starting to drive on our own, like 40-yard line uh, at that point uh, in the first half. So the first two drives, UF scored. Third drive, interception. Fourth drive, uh, was was the turnover on down. So I, I'm happy to see that the defense did make a stand, but I'm still a bit worried that they had to go all the way until their backs were against the wall to do it. Um, granted, I think we can get away with that uh, against teams like Marshall and Western Kentucky and so on and so forth. So um, all that being said, um, Posey Project, guys. Uh, buy, sell, hold, what do you think? I'll hold it for right now. Um, I mean, there's no bigger fan of JV on Posey than me or than I, whatever. I love Posey. I will get a Posey jersey one day, maybe. But my feeling is if you're going to use Posey as a gadget player, I'm all for it. But don't get too cute with it. And that was one of my issues the other night. And I saw some excuses for play calling. Look, yes, you can make the arguments the first game of the year. But you don't need to get too cute. And UF let FAU stay in the game. It was 14-0 at halftime. FAU was still within reach for a good chunk of the third quarter. And I have to ask myself, how many opportunities were there, whether it was on fourth down, whether it was on second down near midfield, where if you call a different play or you get a different player involved, that the drive continues. And this was a problem last year. You're throwing to John Mitchell early. And John Mitchell played very well in his first game back from the ACL injury. Keep throwing the John Mitchell. Get TJ Chase a bit more involved. Get Larry McCammon more involved. I'm not trying to be an armchair critic, but again, that did not have to be 14 0 at halftime. I'm not saying it should have been 21 14 FAU, but FAU had ample offensive opportunities that it seemed like were held back because of drops, because of throwing to the wrong player or getting the wrong player involved. And then 
you know, going forward on fourth near the end of the second, excuse me, near the end of the first half, great decision. Did they call the right play? Probably not. But these are the things that you say now. We got it wrong. We learned from this. We're not going to do it against Georgia Southern. Or you keep trying to be stubborn and be the, the smartest coach on the field. I'm not the one making those decisions, but the powers that be do, I say – Keep giving Posey opportunities, but don't force it. If you want to line Posey up at the X next week, do it. I, my you? question is, what's exactly cute about those three plays? I mean, John Mitchell had four catches. He led the team. That's pretty involved. Uh, it's also hard with, you know, some of that route running didn't have time, right? Like yeah, the, the, those plays. Yeah, I would have loved it. When Florida took some of their guys off the field, I would have loved some more 15-yard crossing routes. But that was not going to happen. Uh, Kosey took five sacks in the first half. So, yeah, there's an element where you have to kind of get cute. I mean, that's, you, again, there, there's a talent thing here. You know, this, this isn't Clemson and Georgia looking back saying, oh, I wish we got this player more involved because pretty much are equal talent. And I think coaching, you got to try and be the smartest coach on the field. You're playing a team that is supremely more talented than you. Does it work sometimes? No, but I also don't think I'm not going to sit here and call a jet sweep to your, like a guy that's arguably your best athlete cute, like execute the handoff. If, if, if Posey, you know, doesn't trip over his own feet, he gets 30 yards on that play. It was the right call. I didn't love the fourth down call. I thought they actually almost didn't go cute enough on that. Okay. Like they really went read option power. Maybe Posey was supposed to pull or do something else. He's not a threat to pass it. We got to remember the play before that, Nikosi Perry uh, missed Brandon Robinson, overthrew him well over his head. And Brandon Robinson had a step. You complete that, you know, you execute that third down play, it's first down. So I, I, I don't, it, it's easy to say, well, let's get this guy involved. Let's get this guy involved. You know, Malcolm Davidson and, and uh, Jamari Ford each were averaging over five yards a carry. So I, I just don't know what else you want them to do against a team more talented. Yeah, could they clean up the mistakes? and play perfect and they probably put some more points on the board. Sure. But you know, I, I to me, it's hard to armchair quarterback when, when you're just, you're trying to, you have to almost scheme guys at you. Have, when you're playing a team like Florida, you have to scheme everything, you know? Um, why didn't we go to Devin Moore Singletary more against Wisconsin? Well, because Wisconsin, you know, sees backs like Devin Motor Singletary every week. You know, we weren't going to push Wisconsin around. Same reason. I bet you'll see more TJ Chase and all those guys because George Sutton's secondary is terrible. So you'll probably see that this week. Yeah. I mean, if anyone liked to be cute, I, I think Lane Kiffin liked to be, if we're going to keep using that term, that word. Uh, Lane loved to use misdirection, trickeration, the whole nine yards. He knew that the athletes that FAU has uh, works for those cutesy type of plays, you know, bubble screens, jet sweeps, so on and so forth. The issue is UF has those same type of players. They're just also bigger and faster. Um, so that being said, I, 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 I kind of like it. I think that we need an offense that can, can do something different as in, you know, being cute. But sometimes I, it just takes more time in, into the season for that to really work. Yeah, I don't know if he followed him, but uh, career, career Elam – is going to be a top 10 pick. He probably followed chase most of the night. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, yo, throw at this, throw at this guy. Who's going to be um, starting for an NFL team a year from now more. We need more of that, you know? And, and, and before we move on to Southern, let's just say that if, if Richardson played over Emory, I, I think that that game is probably a blowout because yeah, it's, he's, he's Dak Prescott. Yeah. Extremely impressive. He's, he's going to um, do that to a lot of people outside of Bama. I, I, I fully expect him to be starting later on in the year. Um, so that being said, uh, speaking of starting uh, <laughs> and, and quarterbacks running all over us, uh, last year, Chase Lassiter was the number one tackler against Georgia Southern. Uh, and thank goodness we just got notification today that he will be back against the Golden Eagles. So that's a perfect segue to go into next week's opponent. Golden Eagles are 1-0 and on the year after a, uh, a surprisingly difficult five-point win 
over FCS Gardner Webb at home. Uh, they're going to be coming down here to Boca Raton to, to Paradise uh, for the first time in program history. Uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. Last year's game was very close. I remember correctly, FAU outgained him. I, I definitely think that FAU outplayed Georgia Southern last year, but we just couldn't find the end zone. The final score there was 20 to three in uh, November of last year, even though the game was supposed to be in September. But hey, that was 2020 for you. Um, uh, their head coach, Coach Lunsford, said, said that basically everyone from that FAU defense that played so well against Georgia Southern last year is back. Everyone but Leighton McCarthy. Uh, there's a lot of power in the defense, a lot of speed. And he said he liked the offense. He said he liked the balance uh, between the run and pass that FAU offense was able to do against UF. And uh, he liked Nikozi Perry, who I, I think played admirably with pressure constantly in his face. Um, so Shane, real quick, I'm, I'm going to hand this one off to you first because Georgia Southern is a, a, uh, triple option style of offense, not maybe the historical or traditional wishbone type that we're used to from like army and Navy. Uh, they kind of spread the field out more. I mean, we saw them less than a year ago. Uh, but, but I, I kind of consider you as like the, the option expert, if you will, especially when it comes to in the opinion of why the hell are we scheduling option teams? So yeah, I've had to be Jack. We've done this podcast. I, I think <laughs> I've been complaining openly to you about playing or having to play Georgia Southern and especially two weeks in air force for three years now. Like what, what are we doing here? Uh, yeah. I, I think FAU's defense does match up well with it, you know, in the scenario in against Florida, where you're having linebackers, Darius Moultrie and Eddie Williams, who are 200 pounds trying to stop the run versus Florida, which is, again, <laughs> what can you do? Hang on to your hat, kids. <laughs> uh, I guess, you know, having kind of those quicker guys getting in and out, you know, put playing of quite a few linebackers on the field. I think you'll see a lot of those guys on the field at once against Georgia Southern. Having familiarity with it is big. They just saw this 10 months ago. So I, I think that's, really big Georgia Southern and for other reasons I've read you know on some of their some of the writers and fans have talked about how since joining the Sun Belt and going through it the first couple of years now you have like a classic kid who have seen the triple option right and you know they just tend to defend it a little better so I think they'll help us go to this game uh, also you know they're starting uh, the, the triple option kind of begins and ends with the quarterback and just the touch, right? Like Navy's a bad football team the the we saw, and it's just, they don't have an elite quarterback. Like they've had the last like, decade, right? They you know, went through a couple of elite quarterbacks. Let me start in Cameron Ransom, uh, a Armwood uh, alumni. Yes, sir. Um, so three, from your, right from your up the street, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. And, uh, I'm somebody, I, I make Cameron and, a on a seven on seven tournament, like three years ago, he's a sophomore. And I'm like, who is this freak? Right. I'm like, somebody get like, I'm like texting people. All right. Can we offer him as a receiver? <laughs> uh, cause he was just a big, strong kid and, and he played quarterback. You know, that, that offense takes a lot of nuance. Obviously, he wasn't being the expected starter. I, you know, obviously, they ran the ball for a lot of yards this week. Uh, but, you know, they struggled to be Gardner Webb. But, you know, I, I think FAU will match up nice. I think this is one of those games where we I mean, had 10 tackles this week versus Florida. I think Caleb Rice is going to eat. He's going to stuff the stat sheet this week. So uh, I, I think they'll defend it well. But you know, the option teams will always get theirs. Absolutely. So, so Jake, a question to you then. Uh, the defense is still working on this new scheme uh, from Coach Stoops. Are you a bit worried about how this scheme, while the players are still learning it, uh, how it will look against a spread option style attack? Jack, I am worried. And listen, I totally understand that this defense, FAU's defense, has tons of playmakers. Caleb Bryce, Kiki Leroy, Evan Anderson, Jordan Hill. You go on and you can go on for hours. But the front seven, like I said, did not play well last week. They're not inspiring confidence in me yet. And even if Georgia Southern doesn't have an elite quarterback, 
if you're able to get your blocks off against an FAU defensive line, which is starting some very young players who haven't seen the triple option at the college level before, and you're going up against linebackers that are still learning the system, look, getting Laster back is a big help. He played great against them last year. But do I think that this is going to be we're going to hold Georgia Southern to 200 yards of total offense and hold them to three points? No. Do I think it's going to be they're going to score 40? No. But I think, and I don't want to jump the gun too much, I think FAU will win, but I think it'll be much closer than people might think. Yeah, and that's a fair observation. I mean, look at FAU last week, gave up 400 yards in the ground. Again, we know that's different type of talent, but you, you look at how Georgia Southern fared against Gardner Webb. They struggled, don't get me wrong, but Logan Wright, Coach Tiger called him a stud uh, this morning in today's teleconference. 26 carries, 178 yards. Doesn't matter if you're playing an FCS team. That's nuts. Uh, they've been having two quarterbacks. Uh, their coach said they still don't know who they're going to start. They're most likely going to rotate. So as Shane said, Cam, uh, Cam Ransom, uh, 8 out of 13 passing for 90 yards, did not do well on the ground, 3 for 9. Uh, Amari Jones, their other guy, he's a senior. Uh, four passes out of uh, four completions out of seven attempts, but he could he could run the ball. 5.2 uh, average per carry, 19 carries for 98 yards. So we know they're going to run. We just got to hope we we're able to, to, to stop them. Uh, and that's obviously going to be easier said than done. But I, I definitely expect the linebackers, like you said, Shane, uh, I think I think Bryce, our little rock star, he's going to rock out. He's going to be able to uh, stat his pad, his stat sheet, no doubt about it. So all in all, that being said, guys, uh, what, what do we think about the final score? I mean, Jake kind of alluded to it a little bit, but Shane, let's start with you. Uh, any predictions, uh, let's get a score line and maybe an interesting stat. Uh, I think FAU is going to be able to put up points, uh, at 31, uh, probably 31, 10, 31, 14, Maybe a little closer early. My interest in set, I think the coaches can go well over 300 this game. I think they're able to eat through the air. You saw enough signs of that kind of later. Again, I after you should have beat Georgia Southern last year. Remember, they returned the short punt and we turned the ball over four times. And we're like still kind of almost in that game at the end. They, you know, they stopped us in the red zone. So we're at home where Georgia Southern not doesn't play as well. I think. Uh, you know, having a 330. I also think there's going to be a pretty nice crowd on hand. I'm just, I have a good feeling about that. I think we similar to Air Force a couple of years ago. I think that's, a, you know, a good game to kind of compare it to. So I'm confident we'll be coming out of there with the win. I saw enough good things at, with UF to have a lot of confidence in this team moving forward. There you go. Shane even brought the uh, attendance prediction. Uh, Jake, what say you? Well, in terms of attendance, I think official attendance, what they list will be somewhere around 16,000, the amount of people who will actually be there, maybe a little under 10. So I'm not as optimistic. I'm not as optimistic with the final score. I think FAU wins. However, I think it's going to be much closer. I'm going to go FAU 21, Georgia Southern 13. Maybe FAU scores 24. I think this is going to be Nikosi Perry playing a game manager role, bringing them very close to the goal line a lot throwing them a touchdown, working downfield. We'll see Johnny Ford get into the end zone again. I think FAU moves to one and one but I don't think it's going to be easy. I think Georgia Southern's offense is going to play better than we think. It'll be close, but I have FAU moving to one and one You know, this game is a tough one to call. I, I don't think I'm biased in, in thinking that I, I think – will win by at least two scores. And we can kind of see Vegas leaning that way as well. Uh, I say 38-24 Owls. I, I think we'll, we'll start off really well, really strong. And Georgia Southern, they'll, they'll kind of figure it out late. Uh, so I mean, I'm expecting halftime to be some sort of blowout. For an individual stat, I, I really think Johnny Ford is going to pop off here. Uh, I'm going to predict over 150 yards, uh, maybe 100 of that rushing. I, I can see him doing really well uh, on quick screen plays. Uh, we even saw him at the wide receiver position a few times up in Gainesville. 
so, you know, expect that with a quick bubble screen once or twice. I think it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, and, and for attendance, the home opener always does relatively well, especially when it comes to the student turnout. So uh, I'm excited for that. I, I think it'll be pretty solid, especially considering the last year, year and a half, two years that we have all been through as a collective. So uh, that being said, I just really want to implore our nation, if you're able to, I know it's, it's still, we're not out of the woods yet, but if you're able to go, go and support the boys. Uh, they definitely deserve it. They, they represent us so well. And uh, I, I would love to get some sort of home field advantage uh, for this Saturday. Uh, hey, bring some flowers for the Howard Schellenberger statue. There's going to be a, a ceremony this week as well. Uh, try to attend that again if you can to uh, pay respects to our founding father, if you will. So that all being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and sign off for the night. Uh, Shane, hey man, I know, you, I know you're really busy, so I, I want to thank you for coming on and joining us. Like I said, y'all, we're going to have Shane on ever so often, so uh, don't fret on that. Uh, but for Jake and myself, your regulars, week in and week out, uh, thank you so much for uh, listening as always. Remember, you can always get this podcast first at fuowlsnest.com and on our YouTube page, uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and they're giving us some issues right now. Um, that will be fixed, but... Uh, Remember, FU Owl's Nest first, every time. Thank you so much, guys. Hopefully, we'll uh, see you next week with a one in one record. <sighs> We're back home, baby. Let's do it. Thanks, guys, and uh, go Owls.